Final race on the program, race number eight, and we have saved the best to last. The Big Wave Bay handicap at class two over the 1,200 metres, headed by Wame Friend, Rolf Ford, Barrier 5, five pounds off with Dylan Moe in the saddle. Super Turbo, of course, and distance win on the final day at Happy Valley last season. Fortune Booth, two from six, the course and distance record stats. Bold Stitch, four from five last season. What a great year he had. Magic Legend will roll forward. Cheerful Jet, three time course and distance win. A Fantest Eight will roll forward from Barrier at number four. And Super Hobby goes up into class two for the first time he's actually on a hat trick as well obviously with the summer break in between we've made our way back to the touch screen to have a look at this one Brad as far as the speed map um, is concerned when they get out of the gates and get rolling be plenty of pace here fantastic eight cheerful jet probably most likely to head them off yeah they're probably the two quickest aren't they Andrew but horses like Alma baby have got speed he could hunt through we know perpetual treasure is probably a better noted dirt horse but he's another one that's got pace magic legend uh, could clearly be up there early and then even maybe Wame Friend to some extent. So there will be a good solid tempo. It's going to suit a horse like Fortune Booth, you would think, um, and probably Super Hoppy, who if he lobs into that spot will end up with a lovely run. Where does Bold Stitch end up? Tony mm. Millard's done a fabulous job with that horse. Won four out of his five starts last season. Um, I'm not sure where he ends up. Super Turbo will get back, and he's a course and distance specialist. Yeah, he was a big winner at the end of last mm. season. Paul, bit of class about this. What have you seen? Yeah, well, here is Super Turbo. He seems to have uh, brought that uh, form from the back end of last season. I think he won on the last day of the last two seasons, isn't he? And uh, Vincent Ho doing the work here. He's going along nicely. The gallop before this was good as well down the back straight. So he's had a good pre preparation. Fantastic Eight had a few uh, problems last season. But he's a very good horse when he first arrived, if he's over all lows. And he seems to be moving freely enough here. Uh, he's another one that's uh, a good chance in this uh, race. Really good race, this one, I think. And he's super hoppy. He's unbeaten at uh, Happy Valley. He's unbeaten for Danny Shum as well. He's had him for both those two starts. And he's a horse that goes well fresh. So with a very light weight, I think he's capable up in this grade. He's going to get a good price about him too. All right. Sounds like you're making a case for him yeah, uh, yeah. already. Super, uh, super hobby. Let's start off with that race, though. It's uh, the back end of last since, uh, season. There's a few to take in here as well. This is the eventual uh, winner in Super Turbo. But the other horses to take a check on. Fantastic eight uh, down the centre. We've got uh, Magic Legend here down on the rail. And uh, the other horse is uh, Wame Friend, just uh, in between the two of them. Yeah, so where do we make a case? Look, for me, Super Turbo's on a career-high rating and he's got a big weight to carry. He did win a race with 133 pounds, but that was Class 3. 97 is as high as he's ever been, but he is a course and distance specialist. On the other hand, Magic Legend, his last win was on a rating of 99, and of course he won his first four races when he got here and was touted as potential group horse. So he's come down a fair way, whereas Super Turbo's gone up. Um, of the others, well, Wame Friend's a tricky one, uh, so I'm happy to s let him go. Yeah, of those ones, I've got uh, Magic Legend in the numbers for that reason. Yeah. A horse that goes well fresh, and he just showed he was back to a little bit of form there as well, and he did win his first form when he got here. Yeah, in. I liked his trial, and Douglas yeah. White uh, is obviously uh, in a bit of form uh, after the first meeting. All right, so Tony Miller's in a bit of form as well, with a winner on the first day. This is Bold Stitch, who just kept on climbing the ladder the back end of last year. I must admit, I thought he had, uh, had reached it before his last win, and then he wins again. I'm... So, uh, look, I'm going to leave him out, but he, he keeps proving me wrong, this horse. He does everything right, and he's he had a great season last season, but I haven't got him in. Have a look at the margin he sets up here. Mm. Six lengths he goes on to win. Um, Tony Miller did a marvellous job, a massive job with this horse. Um, I didn't think he was that good. If he performs like that, he'd be winning this, but I'm just am not sure where he's going to be. It's a different track, obviously. Um... I'm going to leave him out, but um, it's probably at my peril. Mm. No, he's definitely in for me. I think he's yeah. a nice horse, and he's um, so he's got rating points in hands, but he's a progressive uh, yeah. horse. Yeah, he just took a long, long time to mm. uh, to really find his best. You know, um, he's sort of hovering top of four, bottom of three for so long, and then he's just gone whoosh last season. All right, final horse to take a check on, and it's our current favourite as well, and this is uh, Fortune Booth, um, who will love all this pace. He'll just sit in behind, soak it up. He's got a pretty decent turn of foot as well. He does, and this was a good trial. You can see other horses in this trial. Uh, Wishful Thinker in the white colours, Bombay Blitz, Handsome Bobo. 
Um, so there was a reasonable trial and I do like the way he closed off. He's had a few little setbacks um, since his last performance and actually failed the vet's exam as well. Yep. So he's had a few problems with both the front legs. Yeah, lameness issue. He, had, he pulled up lame and then um, he failed the vet because he was lame in the same leg. And that's a little bit of a concern for me. The way he races, he gets his head up, he looks a little bit ungainly. I don't know if barrier one's going to be ideal for him. I think he could get cr um, crowded on the inside. Mm. I've still got him in there because he's good enough, but I haven't... I'm going to give a couple to beat him anyway. Right. I'm exactly the opposite. I think it's perfect for him. Yeah. Just get him behind, put him to sleep. Yeah, not a concern at all. But it is a very competitive race, including this horse as well, Super Hoppy. He'll be ridden by Chad Schofield. Chad, you rode Super Hoppy in a gap up on the turf leading into Wednesday night. What sort of feel did he give you? He feels really, really fit um, for his first up run this season. And um, he's got a nice lightweight and a good draw. He was quite impressive in Class 3 last season with Danny Shum. And um, I think up in grade with a lightweight, he's going to run really well. This is a ride from the Danny Shum stable. A couple of his riders they used more last season aren't riding here this season. Is he someone you're planning to ride a bit more for this season? Yeah, definitely. I'm hoping so. I've been riding a bit of work for him in the mornings and um, he's, he's often offering me a few rides, which is really nice. So it'll be um, good for me if I can win on the, the horse tomorrow night. And this is the first time we've spoken to you for the season, coming off a pretty significant off-season. Congratulations on your engagement. Yep, thank you very much. Very exciting. Um, um, you know, we, sh we should get married hopefully in the off-season next year and, yeah, can't wait for it. Great stuff. Good luck to, uh, to Chad and to Hannah. And Sam, Sam Clement got married in the off-season as well, didn't he? That's right, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, there's plenty of uh, exciting moments going on. Sam, place. He's uh, still on the sidelines, Sam, back on the weekend, I think. As far as this race is concerned, Paul, you're all over Super Hoppy. Yeah, I am. Look, he's unbeaten uh, in his two starts with um, Danny Shum, unbeaten in Happy Valley. We'll get a good price. So he's on top to beat Magic Legend, who's gone down in the ratings. Cheerful Jet had a good season, and uh, Fortune Booth there. He's a good horse. So I'm just a little bit worried about those lameness issues. 11, 5, 7 and 3, but do like the 11. It's a very hard race. There's a lot of horses here that I think can feature in the finish. I ended up going with Magic Legend. Uh, last season really didn't feature uh, in the money that much, but wasn't beaten all that far in a lot of his events as well. Come a long way down in the ratings. Um, happy to go with uh, him. His last win was off 99. He's on 88. Fortune Booth, fantastic eight from the front. I think we'll run a big race. Super Hoppy, 5, 3, 9, 11. It's very competitive. Yeah, it's a super race, this one. Uh, I've got a lot of time for the three and the four. Fortune Booth and Bold Stitch just came down on the side of Fortune Booth in the end, but a strong end uh, to the Knights. And uh, Fortune Booth will be ridden by Zach Purton. No one rode Happy Valley better last season. No, I think this was the difference when he won the... Well, it was the difference when he won the Premiership. You can see he had a uh, good win rate of 21% there with um, 51 wins, 39 seconds, 20 thirds from his 238 rides. So very, very good uh, stats there for Zach Purton. He's got snow hoops. Country Star, I think, is going to be tough to beat along with Bundle of Energy and Speedy Wally. So there's three horses I think uh, he can easily win on. On. Jumbo Happiness, Sky Melody's tried well, and uh, Fortune Booth the last, so another really good book. Yep, he'll be short in the challenge, that's he for sure. He certainly will be, yeah. Best bets, uh, though, Paul, just to reiterate, Super Hoppy for you? Yeah, I'm going to go with Super Hoppy. I do like him, and I think we're going to get a price. That's one of the main reasons I've gone with him. He's a young horse, well, he's come through the grades, and I think he's got rating points in hand. Lightweight, low barrier draw, he'll do me. Super Hoppy and Happy Life. Uh, I think he's playing seven now, but he's playing four a play. So I think he'll drift out to about $14, $15, which is where he should be. But I still think he can run well for the new stable. And we'll make the uh, play of the day in the last, because we'll get some good exotics around Magic Legend, Cheerful Jet and Super Hop. Uh, my best is race six, number 11, Phantom Falcon. Lightweight, good, honest little horse who I think can find a little bit more this uh, preparation. And in the first, Eastern Prowess, who spent some time at Chunfar, race one, number eight. Trial was OK from him. I think he'll run a race at a bit of a price. Starlet, Young Dreamer, Snow Hooves, race two, QQP is my play. All right, best for me, race seven, number one, Thunderstorm should get the perfect run behind the speed. Keith Young and Mi Choi combined there. And the previous race, Chad Schofield again, my ally for Richard Gibson. Bit of class about this horse, placed in the German uh, Guineas a few uh, years ago. And the play in race seven, Thunderstorm, Sky Melody and Ho Ho Feel should soak up all that speed as well. All right, that is it as far as our first meeting is concerned. Looking forward to Happy Valley. Should be absolutely packed Wednesday night. I would think so, Andrew. Yeah, everyone's had a decent enough break and we'll be keen to get back. All right. Yep, the beer garden will be pumping and everyone will have a great time. <laughs> Take to you as well. That's the show. Thanks for watching. On behalf of Paul Brett and the rest of the team, hopefully we'll see you at Happy Valley on Wednesday night when we will be racing to win. Good night. Good night.